this up. So what, what challenge will it be to try to, to contain him? Well, um, you know, you look at this football team, and one of the things that concerns you is how many weapons they have, how many different weapons they have on offense. You can tell he's been there five years and been building the program. Um, I, I have said time and time again in going through this league, let me go all the way through it to get a better evaluation of where everybody is. Um, I think from what I've seen, this is a this is a different talent level team uh, than what we've been playing. And I can see why everybody, so many people picked them to win the to win the Big East. I mean, you look at them, they've got not just one tailback, but they've got two tailbacks. You know, one's there are two sophomores, and one's rushing for 100 yards, and one's rushing for 70 yards a game. Uh, they've got a big offensive line. They're strong since Siri's been in it, and they've got two great receivers that have great height that are 6'5", 220, 6'5", 230. They're built more like tight ends that can go up and get the ball. They make it very hard to defend them because they have so many different weapons, and they're, and they're good at what we do. We've got an incredible challenge, um, not just with ball one, but with the, the entire offense, with really with what we're looking at from a defensive standpoint. Uh, I think this is our biggest challenge to date. And when you look at their productivity, I mean, they can beat people 45-13 and 45-10, and they have been, you know, and that's why you look at them. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous football team. It's a very dangerous football team because they're very good on defense and they can score so many points on offense. Is there a key to, to trying to approach a physical receiver like that and try and contain him? No, I mean, the thing, the problem with it, and like I said, it, he ties into the whole package. If it was just him and you could roll coverage over to him and do some things to turn and try and take him away, you've seen people bracket receivers, high-low receivers, you know, that he deserves that type of attention. The only problem is as soon as you give him that kind of attention, there's so many other weapons on the field that they can they can hurt you. The thing that you got to do is you got to challenge your players. To, they're going to be in some one-on-one situations, and we're going to have to turn and we're going to have to we're going to have to challenge them to turn and make some plays. But it's going to be there's going to be some one-on-one challenges with the ball in the air, and our secondary is really going to have to step forward. With what Lindsey's been able to do, does it make you nervous at all that the teams are going to stop kicking it back there to him altogether? You know, when you look at it, there have been a lot of teams that have pooched and squibbed a lot of balls against us anyway. I mean, we, we do a statistic. We, we keep more of the net kickoff return than we do the kickoff return yardage. Because um, if they want to pooch it to our up back at 30 yards and he has a five-yard return, I'll take starting on the 35, 40-yard line every Shields time. I mean, the, pretty good one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, but I look at that as a win for us. When they pooch it because they don't want to kick it deep, it's just like kicking it to the goal line and having a 35 or 40-yard return. So we keep the net. Um, and if Lindsey being back there causes people to pooch it, then we really got to challenge our, our, our front line and our up backs to turn and catch a ball and get what they can get and hopefully that we can turn and make it a positive field position for our offense because that's the ultimate goal when we go to kickoff return. Okay. Considering the pension he's had, for, I know it's only two, but two is more than a lot of teams have. Yes, uh, I mean, is it still worth taking the, the good field position over letting him get a couple chances? Oh, I'd love to have him get a couple chances. I hope they can I, I mean, <laughs> But does the nerves kick in there that, I mean, they would take him out of the game? Well, you know, I mean, they can. They, they, they can. I mean, they can take him out of the game. But it's a, to me, it's a winning proposition when you can turn and say you're going to start at the 40-yard line or give him an opportunity to return it. Uh, it's a winning proposition because the ultimate goal being the team, um, we, we're starting in positive, you know, with positive field position from a kickoff return. Like I said, if you average 40 yards of return, you're going to lead the, you're going to lead the, the Big East, you're going to lead the country in the return game. So that's where, that's why we do the net because sometimes when you have a good return, I think it's a real testament to everybody on that team. When you have a good return team, you're going to start to get squibs and pooches and things like that where they're trying to throw off the rhythm and, and turn and take it out of the returner's hands. And, and speaking of looking at the net field position with special teams, uh, Justin's numbers have gone down since his quick start to the season. Uh, but when you look at that, I mean, it's, is there something in there that maybe is not on paper that the, you know, the field position he's providing with you guys is still as good? Or is no, we're still struggling. Well, he has struggled. I mean, he, he's not he's not going as well as he was earlier in the season. But um, with the cover teams, there's still there's very there's zero return. I mean, so even though he may only be punting the ball at 38 rather than 45. Um, when you look at the net, the net is still being around the 38-yard line. Whether you kick it 45 and they average three or four yards of return, whether you kick it 38 with no return. Uh, but he has not kicked the ball as well as he did early. And that's something that we've talked about a number of times out here. Just he's got to find his own stinger. I mean, he's lost his stinger a little bit, a little bit of his confidence. Last week he had some 25-yard punts in the air into the wind, but everything with the wind went from 
42 to 57, I believe, you know, but into the wind, it was, a, it was about 25 yards that they were going in the air, but he got some great roll out of it. But I think he's a very talented young man. And, you know, it's a long season, and this is the first time he's had the opportunity to go through the season and the mental drain that it takes on you to do this, not once, not twice, but 12 times in a row each and every week coming out here and making sure that you can focus on your mechanics and all those things that are going to keep you consistent as you go through it. And that's part of being a sophomore compared to being a senior and a guy that's been in that situation for, for an entire season. You stress the importance for this group to keep that one-game mentality approach as it goes yes. through. But, you know, leading into last week, you saw uh, you know, Pittsburgh go down. Right. And then you, you get the big win against Louisville. So how much tougher does it become seeing the things sort of playing out in front of your eyes, things that you need to happen happening? Uh, well, I, I think where it gets where it gets tougher is because uh, Pittsburgh loses the game and they're going to go back with more determination and resolve. They're still they're going to be telling we're still in first place. You know, we didn't lose anything here. We just got to turn. We got to tighten some things up. We got to go back to doing these basic things we were doing when we're winning. And we're going to see a better Pittsburgh team than, than there was a week ago. Um, but I still think we just have to focus on what we can control. The, I keep telling the team, this time of year, the circus gets bigger and bigger around the, around the game. And early in the season, the circus surrounds the game itself. As you get into the middle or later part of the year, the circus surrounds the program all week. The student body's talking about it. The newspapers are talking about it. The blogs and the chat rooms are all talking about it. And they if this, then this scenarios. And what we've got to do is we can't fall, we can't fall into that trap because taking our time, effort, and energy, every bit of time, effort, and energy, we think about the what ifs. We're taking away from what we ought to be doing and mentally preparing and getting ready for a game. It's going to be a heck of a challenge. This is a team that beat us 41 to 14 last year. You know, it's a very talented football team, not only on paper but on the field as well.